this is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Well, the last time I interviewed you two together was in Bethnal Green uh, for Frampton Train. It's a little bit different here, isn't it? A little bit different. In fact, we've just got you then, haven't we? Yeah. That was just <laughs> at the point when we just got you. I think, yeah, literally, I walked into the hotel and Nigel D. It? Yeah. it was a good um, day, that. It was a really good day. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> um, yeah, so you've been here for three weeks. Uh, just talk to me about how it's been sort of in the bar. Good. You say training finished off perfectly. Um, Carl's in, in probably the best form I've seen him. So we've had him for three and a half years now, and and, um, and I'd say he's the best form he's, he's been in since he's been with us, which is a good sign because he'll need to be because of the task at hand. But uh, but yeah, we got here and, and we've been well looked after, and uh, obviously because the situation back home, it's made things a bit easier because sort of it's difficult being locked in your house sort of before and after training and things. Whereas we've had a bit of freedom here and we've been able to sort of relax and pass time a little bit better, so it's been good. Nigel, we know what's at stake here for Cole, um, becoming Ireland's first ever three-weight world champion. And, and you said to, exactly the same thing to me as what Jamie just said there. Uh, you said it off camera, where Carl was absolutely flying, and this is the best you've seen him. Yeah, I, I'm sure that maybe it, it can sound a bit of a publicity boast because I understand that you hear other teams saying, "Oh, I've never, I've never done the way as good. I've never felt as good." But again, it's a fact. It's a simple fact that uh, for, for us, it's the, it's the best we've definitely ever seen him. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm massively confident. I think. Uh, I think all everything, everything that he's led, has led him to this point in his career, in his life, um, and, and God willing, uh, he puts in the performance that we expect him to do. But yeah, kids on fire. And in terms of being here in Dubai, obviously not much of a difference. Three or four hours to the UK, <laughs> and you've been here for three weeks. Jamel Herring, however, um, I believe ten or eleven hours different from Colorado, where where he's based um, in the states. And he's only got here this weekend a couple of days ago. Do you think that's going to play a factor, Jamie? It could do. <clears throat> I believe it will, but you know, we, we can't, even though we think it will be a factor, we can't, we can't look at situations like that and go, you know, hopefully it affects him. Mm. Because, because that, if it doesn't affect him, then what? So that, we, have, we have to go, we have to expect the best herring. I, I said this yesterday to somebody else, you know, there's been a lot of talk about his last performance. Um, and you know, can do you take sort of pick things out of that and take confidence from it? Some maybe, but I I'm not a believer in someone of Herring's sort of age and experience being able being able to perform to his best of his ability in fights like that. It's just you know you could say the same for even though Carl's opponent in his last fight wasn't probably as good as Herring's, but he didn't perform anywhere not like you'd want him to expect. So I don't expect the herring what was in his last fight. What I've sort of realised with Carl is, you get the best version of every fighter he's come across. That's what they do, because then it's a big, massive occasion for him to be fighting someone like Carl. So I've no doubt we'll get the best version of herring. But, um, but when we looked at this fight from the outset, I liked it, not because I think Carl's a super featherweight, but I liked the ambition of it. And I liked the style match up. I think Carl's style is perfect for Herring. So it's not it's not a case of do I think his size is going to be a difference. I don't think that'll come into the equation. I really don't. I think mm. I think Carl's capable enough to to outbox him and outfight him at the same time. I think it's fair to say we've seen Carl's bodywork improve um, since your link up. Um, I think that's a fair comment. It's been evident to see in the McCreary fight and also the trainer fight, he was going to the body a lot. Obviously, Jamel Herring's body is a big target. Is that going to be a key for Carl this weekend? I think it would be stupid not to. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it has to be the be-all and end-all. That's, that's, that, that's the beauty of it, because I think Carl's got many more strings to his bows. I do, I do think the, the major part of the reason why Carl's improved on his body punching is because I've shown him videos of me sparring Nigel years ago <laughs> and he's seen how much success I had done there dick. and, and he's, he's took confidence from that himself. I thought he was going to come out and say, you know, we've been watching a bit of Canelo or, but yeah, there you go, that's the secret. Funnily enough, but again, he, 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 he was like the bongo drums. I just used to stand there on the ropes wailing away. He has 
but mentioning Canelo in particular, he has been watching a lot of it mm -hmm. himself. So he, he, he's, he's caught his saying that in other, in other interviews because, you know, when, obviously people are looking at the, the fight thinking the size, it's all about size. And, and obviously, we, it just seems like we were in the, um, in the gym and there's a picture of Tommy Hearns and, and Marvin Hagler, and the size difference is massive. Mike Tyson, you know, versus any of his opponents, it's massive. So size is not always. Um, it's, it's not the size of the dog, it's, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the... Yeah, yeah, come in. Come, come in, sorry. Um, yeah, it's not it's the size of the, the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog, is that what he's trying to say? I was waiting for this guy, mate. Let me, let me, he he forgot, he definitely forgot, and yeah. I saved him. Did I save you? Yes, please, boss. Did Thank I you. save you, then? You shut up, you dick. Thank you. I saved Very you. kind. Definitely. So, superstar, yeah? <laughs> This is my dad. Yeah. <laughs> why is he why is he making the jokes? <laughs> um, he's just ready to go and the, the body shots are obviously something that he seems to improved on with, with work by you know what, what we're doing but his all round game, you know, I think he's, he's changed and, and he steps it up and and again that that feeling he's getting you know, he seemed, he's, again, I'm using his quotes saying that he's never felt as good in himself, emotionally, you know, you know in his mindset. So that's uh, nicking other people's cliches, happy fire is a dangerous fire. And he's that's very, very. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the, it's true, to be fair, it's true. Your mindset, as a fighter, I'd, I'd go as far as to say 70% on the night is down to your mental, so your mental state, your toughness, your determination. You can be the most talented fighter in the world, and then the occasion gets there, or you know, you know, you get cut, and so, something throws you off your, off your game plan or your mentality, and then, and then he sort of can send you down a different path. I've never seen him as adamant and as confident in getting a win in mm. life. Mm. He's, he sort of, it, it's, he sort of plays off on you. You sort of, he's that confident in himself at the moment. He's, sort of increases your confidence in him so it's great to see talking about mental toughness Jamel was obviously a former US Marine a lot's been said about that however if you look at the fight with Jonathan Aquendo is it fair to say that Carl perhaps is willing to go places that from that performance against Aquendo and what happened Jamel might not be no I don't believe that because of what I just said before he's fighting Carl now and before he even gets in the ring, his mindset will be different. It will have been different all the way through this training camp. So, so you sort of condition yourself for the fight mentally as well as physically for ten weeks. And I've done it myself as a, you know, going off experience as a fighter myself. You're going in to a to a ten round non title fight against someone who you'd expect mm. it to be, and you just can't physically get up for it as much as you try to pump yourself up to get to it. You just can't do it. And then those natural endorphins and nerves and that sort of what puts you onto that level where that fight or flight instinct kicks in. That's what Jamal's gonna have against Carl. But so is Carl. So that's why you're gonna see the best of both fighters and um, you know Cat I think Jamal's never been in, in with a fighter, I don't believe, as at the level of Carl. And that's gonna be probably something what wh wh whether he can deal with it or not is yet to be seen. But, so I'm not saying he can't. What I'm saying is, is Carl's going to present him different problems than he's ever experienced before. Mm. Nigel, throughout the camp, has much been made of the fact that if Carl does this on Saturday night, in your opinion, when he does this, that he goes down as Ireland's greatest ever fighter. Has, has much been made of that in the camp? No, no. You know, it's not been a, a, a factor in it. You know, the kid's ambition is is obvious. You know, and how he trains you know, in the gym. He's obvious, you know. It's it's certain. It's you know. He's, he's there. You know. He wants to stay longer sometimes. Wants to train harder. So the the battle sometimes been is to, to calm him down um, because you know it, you know his professionalism is, is tantamount to, to who he is. But um, obviously, if you're in it, you know, if you're educated in the sport, you know, which we are, I would like to think we are, um, the, we understand the significance of it. But um, I think I think he's already one of Ireland's greatest yeah, fighters, and, and he listen he will 
he will he will try and demean it a little bit. I'll try and do it do it down because he's just not a he's not a brash talking kind of kind of lad. But um, I think it's I think it definitely puts him without a doubt being a or Ireland's all time greatest fighter. And you know he's but it's not any sort of training. He's just done, he's been in the gym mm -hmm. every day and just wanting to learn and wanting to to do and and I think we'll see that come come final. Having said that, we know prize fighters and professional fighters do need that little bit of extra motivation sometimes to get the best out of themselves. And because of what's at stake this weekend, has there been a different edge to Carl slightly? Um, I think there's been a different demeanour about him. I won't say a different edge. He just he knows this is special. So so when somebody's had a career like Carl's had and achieved what he's achieved, you know in terms of achievements in, in the sport and also you know in, in terms of setting himself up for the rest of his life him, him and his family where do you go from that point you, 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 you have to find something really special to find the motivation to go on you know I said this last week to somebody else as well the conversation we had in the change rooms with Josh Warrington uh, after the Josh Warrington fight and you know he said to me I'm done and I went good I'm glad you, I'm glad you can enjoy the rest of your life with your family now and a week after we was in Dubai he walked up to me in the reception and he said I can't go out like that and I was like hiya mate you okay that was like literally the first thing he said to me since I saw him in the fight and he went no seriously I can't go out like that I've got to prove something to myself that's different that's not doing it because you want to be a world champion that's not doing it because you want to earn a load of money that's doing it because he has something to prove to himself mm. these there's something scary about someone who's motivated by something like that. We really do look forward to a historic occasion this weekend in Dubai. Just a couple of quick pointers. Obviously, this is going to be on Channel 5, which is brilliant and going to go out to millions of people in the UK and Ireland. Yeah, terrestrial TV. It's fantastic. You know, people who haven't got Sky, you know, and streaming it maybe or trying to nick it off, whatever, but it's, it's brilliant. Terrestrial TV, because people, everyone can watch it. The whole nation can watch it, you know. You can watch the undercard fully on, on IFL. Um, and but the fact that, that, that everybody can see it for free as such, with the, if they've got to, is fantastic for for Carl. You know, I think it's you know, it's, I think the event is, warrants it. I really do. I think for the whole of UK and Ireland as well. Yeah. You know, you think the amount of people who are going to be tuning in mm. in, in Northern Ireland and, and the whole of Ireland. I won't be surprised if they hit the two million mark. So it's uh, it's fantastic because. The knock-on effect of that then with the kids, you know, hopefully seeing Carl achieve something as big as that on terrestrial TV, is uh, it goes on for years, you know, for the next 10, 15 years, you could get kids walking to boxing gym saying, I remember the, the night I watched world, uh, Carl Frampton win a third world title. So, um, so yeah, fantastic job by MTK and D4G, the promoters, and Top Rank and Frank Warren, they've come together, done this deal for Channel 5, and, um, and I think in the long run for boxing in general, it's, it's a good move. Absolutely, 10 p.m. UK time, ring walks uh, for the main event. And uh, to, Nigel just mentioned the undercards on IFL TV. Um, quick pointer on the undercard: you've got a little new addition, uh, a Kazakh uh, super welterweight. Just tell me about him, please, Jamie. So we've nicknamed him the Tersonator. It's called Tersen Bay Kalatma, and uh, he's a fantastic fighter. He's two and zero. Um, they're talking big. He's MTK Kazakhstan wanting fighting for the world title within eight fights. They said, so um, so so he's an unbelievable fighter. There's stuff to work on in terms of the professional game. Fantastic amateur, but um, but yeah, he's really he's really settled in, really took to it with us, and um, I think you'll see a special performance. I think it's live on. YouTube and I felt. Yep. So so you better get his um, thing and he's just said that. Have you been ignoring this little bugging on? He can't. We've just had, stop talking while I'm talking. That's very we've rude. Just, we've he, just had a conversation. Maxine and Kelvin said the bring undercard. you up properly. Fancy, <laughs> fancy just told you. Like that. And you said, by the way, he said, no, so, dickhead. So as I was saying, he's a. Did you swear again then? I swear. As, as, as I was saying, he was rude, rudely interrupted. He's, um, he's settled in really nicely and he can't speak English. He's very, very little English. So we've been teaching him phrases. One of the first phrases I taught him was, hey, dickhead, to Nigel from the gym. And he, and he, he put a smile on his face. But he's a lovely kid. He can fight like hell. He really is good. And, uh, and he's coming on loan. So 
him watch this space. Yeah, we definitely will. Live on IFL TV. Is it live on IFL TV? Wow. YouTube. Dude, this is just an advert. Is YouTube. <laughs> is YouTube on the internet? Is that the internet? No, it's interweb. The interweb. Is that right? <laughs> You need a shave, by the way. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for by night. Yeah, Big, you know, shave off. I'm gonna have an haircut. Never, <laughs> never. And just to close off, uh, Everlast are sponsoring, sponsoring this fight, and uh, they've done a, a massive deal uh, earlier this this week in um, sponsoring 52 fighters, signing yeah. 52 fighters. Uh, a massive commitment to boxing, oh. Jamie. It can only be a good thing. Unbelievable, yeah. And Chantel was one of the first ones to be announced as part of our camp. So, so yeah, it was good. And Everlast have really sort of helped our fighters out over the last year or so. Um, and this deal is just in the long run is going to be huge for for British boxing, especially because um, you know Everlast have been a name around boxing for years and years, and it, you know the the, the sort of putting back into boxing now, which is great to see. Yeah, Nigel, just your comment on uh, Everlast's move. Yeah, as Jay said, because Jay said before, what else did you say before? I didn't stop being reminded, you know? IFL TV, YouTube. Ah, oh, no, they ain't there anymore. With Everlast. <laughs> With Everlast, sponsored by, is he sponsored by Everlast? Fantastic. No, I think that they're, they're investing in, in British sport, you know, in British boxing, because the government have sold us down the river, not supporting, you know, the government supporting um, boxing, you, you'd like them to also put it on in the pocket but basically you know the fact that they're giving this signing all these fighters it's investment in the sport that it's, it's flourishing so everyone was worried about what was going on about oh, i was always concerned about what was going on over the pond and really you know i'd like to think that really it's the heartbeat of the, of the boxing world at the moment seems to be on the british isles so that's a great thing Jamie Moore, Nigel Travis, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV out here in Dubai. I really do wish you the best of luck like, this weekend uh, with Carl, and I'm sure we're going to catch a word after the fight, okay? Thanks, guys. Cheers, mate. God bless.